If you're in your 50s or 60s and looking to retire within the next few years, there's typically a few obstacles that keep people from pulling the trigger on their plans. One of the ones that we hear about the most often in the meeting rooms is we would like to go ahead and retire, but we would like to wait until we get the mortgage paid off. Yes. Now, this is a noble and understandable cause. You know, uh, we talk a lot about financial independence and what that means to people, uh, because for a lot of us, being financially independent means having no debt. Mm-hmm. Right. And there's been a lot of talking heads out there that make a huge deal about being completely debt free. Yes. And and generally speaking, the math would benefit you if you had the mortgage paid off. But mm-hmm. what we're talking about is when we're going to extremes to do so. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. So there's definitely some people that take that to the extreme and do some things that could hurt them a lot more than mm-hmm. it could help them. And so let's talk about the ways where paying off the mortgage, mortgage, excuse me, is not healthy for you, where it could mm-hmm. hurt your finances. Yeah. So the number one way, just to jump right into things, uh, number one mistake that we see people doing is using pre-tax funds from retirement accounts to pay off low mortgage interest, or I'm sorry, low mortgage rate. Low interest rate. That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> Low interest rate mortgages. That's okay. I wasn't going to get on. I wasn't going to point out that you said pre-tax runs, but now, you know, anyway. But yes. I did not. You know, you would have teased me too. Mm -hmm. Um, Here's the thing. If you're using money from a pre-tax account, it's going to be taxable when you take it out. So let's say you're using an employer plan and you're getting ready to retire and you decide you're going to take out a large sum to pay off your mortgage. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem. Let's pretend you had a $250,000 30-year mortgage at 3% interest originally. Mm -hmm. You're 26 years in and you only have $30,000 left. So you're like, I'm just going to pay that thing off. Well, you would have $1,117 left to pay an interest in that loan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because this is something people don't realize is that the the interest is top heavy. When you first start paying on your mortgage, that's when you're paying the largest amount of interest. Mm -hmm. I'm living this right now. I looked at my statement the other day and about threw up how much of it was actually going to interest versus principal. Yeah. Yeah. At the beginning of it, if you have a you know, $1,000 per month mortgage, mm-hmm. probably 80% of it is going to be all interest. And then at first, yes. Yeah, yeah. So at this point, you know, you're 26 years in, you only had four years left anyway. You're really only going to save $1,117 if you pay it off as far as interest goes. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. And that's, it, again, if you have uh, having $30,000 left to pay on the principal, right? Which- mm-hmm. Again, is to to me as we did the math and saw that that was pretty shocking that uh, you know, even having that large of an amount left doesn't really create that much interest because of the way that the mm-hmm. mortgages are structured. Correct. And if you used thirty thousand dollars in retirement savings, mm-hmm. so you increased your income by thirty thousand, and you didn't already have the taxes held for you, when you get ready to pay the tax man, you're gonna owe somewhere around four thousand dollars between federal and state. At the very least. At that's minimum. Assuming that's assuming you're in the lowest, the lowest tax, tax brackets, yep. which yep. if you've got other income, that changes things dramatically. Mm-hmm. So that you're you're trading off at minimum four thousand mm-hmm. dollars to save one. Exactly. That's so, why we tend to say if it's pre tax money, just don't. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about when that gets bigger, yeah. pretending so, you have other income. Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the problem gets quite a bit bigger really quick because for most people, that $30,000 that they pull from their retirement account is not the only income that they're going to have mm-hmm. for the year. right? So let's say that you and your spouse have a total of about $80,000 in taxable income, which would put you in the 12% tax bracket. Okay, So if you added another $30,000 to that mix, it's not... Four thousand dollars that it, an extra in taxes that you're having to pay because mm-hmm. that extra thirty thousand dollars that you pulled from retirement accounts actually jumps uh, or makes you jump to the next tax bracket. So now you're paying twenty two percent tax uh, tax rate on that money. So now mm-hmm. instead of paying that four thousand dollars in in federal and state taxes, you're paying about six thousand six hundred dollars in federal taxes alone. Yes. So that's where it can kind of balloon on you. Um, and again, most mortgages, even with interest rates being higher like they are mm-hmm. now, it's still not freakishly high interest rates that a lot of people are paying on their mortgages. Right. And if you're close to retirement, you've probably had that mortgage for a while anyway. So mm-hmm. just be mindful and think about if the impact if it wasn't 30000 that you owed, but you owed 100000 on your mortgage and you're trying to pay it off. I've had someone come to me wanting yeah. to pull out two hundred, and I was just like, whoa. Right, I was right. like, please talk to your tax preparer because this is going to 
hammer you on taxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, people definitely don't understand you know, the impact of that because in the moment they see that dollar amount in their retirement account and they say, you know, it's my money. Mm -hmm. right? I should just be able to use it for whatever. And you can. Yeah, you certainly you can. You can use your retirement <laughs> account funds for whatever you want, but there is a cost. And that's the key. Mm -hmm. When it comes to finances in general, when you're making financial decisions, they are yours to make. Mm -hmm. But there is a cost to those decisions. So you have to think through the different pieces of that. And that's where I feel like we come in best for our clients is we can yeah. say, hey, I get that you're wanting to do this goal. Have you thought of these other things that that affects? Mm -hmm. Because you're certainly entitled to do what you want with your money, mm -hmm. but you got to make sure you're covering the rest. And often what happens when people are wanting to take large sums for paying something off, they don't want to take care of the taxes then. Yep. So then tax man comes around and they want to do another large distribution exactly. to cover the taxes. So it's like doubling yes. down. Exactly. Yes, yes. And that is kind of the, the next biggest step that people make. Uh, and, and it goes hand in hand with that first mm -hmm. one, right? So yeah, uh, if, if you have, you know, kind of going back to that same example, you pulled out the 30,000 and it bumped into another a higher tax bracket. So now you're having to pay an extra $6,600 in taxes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not exactly money that most people have in their pocket, mm -hmm. according to studies. So um, the, the problem is that, okay, so now people are going to say, well, I need that extra six thousand six hundred dollars, you know, to pay the taxes. Well, I'm just going to take that also out of mm -hmm. my retirement account. Well, it, that is just a vicious cycle because yes. again, now remember, your income again. remember that every dollar that you take out of that retirement account is going to count extra for your taxable income. Mm -hmm. So now your every dollar that you're taking out is more and more and more taxes. So now you're going to have to pay taxes on your tax payment. Yeah. <laughs> Taxes on taxes. It's not. It's That's America. Ooh, I mean, we do that It makes anyway. me want to cry. But I think the key here is if you're going to need, if you're planning to take a large sum, either have the taxes withhold on the front end, just go ahead and plan for them that way, mm -hmm. or make sure you've got some savings set aside to cover that tax bill so that you're not caught off guard mm -hmm. and stuck trying to kind of keep backpedaling with yeah. it. Yeah. So if you believe that paying off your mortgage is still worth it to you, then at the very least, make sure that you have that money set aside outside of the retirement account, right? Don't don't pull that extra money also out from your retirement account. Have that, you know, in savings or mm -hmm. you know, in, in some other type of uh, method that is not going to cost you more, more, more taxes. Yes, today. and uh, but wait, there's more. Um, <laughs> if you think this this kind of math couldn't get worse. Imagine you're not quite 59 and a half oh, because God. there's another one of those little caveats that people don't know about yeah. sometimes. And that is your IRA, your employer plan. Most of those are going to have a requirement that you'd be 59 and a half or older to take out without a penalty. Right. So let's talk about how the penalty works. Yes. If I draw $10,000 from my employer plan today, cause I'm not 59 and a half, it is taxable mm -hmm. as 10,000 additional dollars to my budget. Mm -hmm. But I also owe a flat fee for that penalty, which is 10%. Mm -hmm. So my $10,000, I owe the government 1000 right off the top. And then I get to also pay based on a higher taxable income with the full 10000 Yes. So that can just really, really hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and, and sometimes this will happen when people are switching jobs. They'll say, well, I've got this old employer plan. I'm going to use that to pay off debt. Yeah, yeah. Because for, <laughs> and this is, not uh, I don't know I like not you know something that um, is a great thing to happen. But whenever you switch employers, right, it, you you basically gain access uh, mm -hmm. to to those funds because whenever uh, you switch employers, uh, typically while you're employed, you don't have access to your 401k. You can't mm -hmm. just pull money out. But when you switch employers, you you can. Right. So pe people are like, OK, this is my, my chance while I'm switching jobs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and do this. And yeah, this is not great, especially if you're like you said, not quite 59 and a half yet, uh, because, again, I mean, just looking back on it, you know, you started if, if 30,000 was your only income for the year, then, yeah, you're at the 10 percent tax bracket. But then all of a sudden you get bumped up to the 22nd tax bracket mm -hmm. or 22 percent tax bracket. And or then higher. And then Depending if, on what your if, new salary is. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Depending on your salary, if you get an, a sign-on bonus, mm-hmm. it, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just a lot, a lot of things that could go wrong there. All right. So, so we've been negative, Nancys. We have. We talked about what but doesn't work. We work. just want you to know so bad <laughs> that it, the payoff may not be worth it. it. Very likely is not worth it. Um, so yes. But there are some times where. It does make sense to pay the mortgage off. Some situations where it does make sense to do that yeah. before retirement. So let's talk about a few of those. Yes. So the main one uh, that that I would say is using savings or just non-retirement dollars mm-hmm. to pay off the mortgage, right? And this is also um, in, I would say, uh, just in, in times when, uh, like we had for the previous 10 plus years where mm-hmm. we've got really, really low interest rates. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. And, um, because even now, like having a low interest mortgage, uh, it, it just makes it really difficult for, for that to be worth it. But yes. if you've got the, the savings, um, apart from retirement assets, and if you, that is just a really high priority goal for you, then I would say, yeah, that it'll help. And I had a client recently who was close to retirement. They they were a little bit later. They were going to retire at like 68. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were really close to retirement. Their spouse had already retired. Um, they were going to have a much bigger social security check. So in their mm-hmm. situation, what we did was she was going to be getting a spousal benefit once he started social security anyway. Right. So starting hers early wasn't really going to make a huge impact. Mm-hmm. She wasn't working. So we started hers and that social security check went to the house payment to pay it off faster. Yeah. So there's more than one way to skin a cat. I hate mm-hmm. that phrase, but it is the <laughs> idea behind this. Um, sometimes your advisor might be able to come up with something creative for you to help you with that idea as well. Yes. Uh, also, this becomes uh, even more beneficial if uh, you have a higher interest rate on your mortgage, right? Mm-hmm. If you weren't able to refinance during you know the past four years uh, and you're still carrying you know, a five, six you know, higher uh, rate, mortgage then then yeah this is going to be uh, a a smart move for you mm-hmm. uh, because uh if, if again if it's not higher than than that then i mean right now cd's and uh, even treasury bonds are paying you know four or five percent shorter term ones yeah mm-hmm. and then if you have you know if you're going to use investment assets to liquidate mm-hmm. and pay this off if you've got some losses you can use to offset that so you, you know if you're working with a non-tax or non-pre-tax account, so you're just typical investment accounts, um, you can do this balancing act of like, I'm going to take a gain here, take a loss there, so that the right. taxes end up not being an issue, mm-hmm. but you can still access the money. And with the market over the last year, that's probably an option that you might have access to. You know, we've got yes. some asset classes just didn't do as well. So that's one way you can help offset the taxes to make it more realistic. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and uh, but to me, like that situation is kind of funny because it has... Less to do with, you know, paying off the mortgage mm-hmm. and more of, okay, what, what other benefits can we capitalize on, you know, apart from, you know, the, the interest that we're paying off, right? Because uh, I think, you know, in that example, again, if, if it's only saving you a, a thousand bucks, then I, I don't know that, um, that that is quite a, a huge benefit. But when we can look at kind of the greater picture and see, okay, what other benefits can we find? Then that's a great one. Um, and mm-hmm. obviously... Y- we already talked about the way that mortgages are, are structured uh, with the interest on the front end, right? So if you are, you know, uh, towards the beginning of that that loan, um, you know, let's say that you, you know, paid a pretty good down payment mm-hmm. on on the house, and you know, so you don't have a huge balance on that mortgage. Uh, well, there's still, uh, you know, the the higher interest. Uh, that you're going to pay the bulk of it is going to be on the front end, so uh, you'll Paying you will have higher earlier, right. It's going to have a greater impact. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're just going to have more benefits uh, from paying it off earlier at that point. Mm-hmm. And there are some alternative options out there too. I kind of mentioned one of them before, where it's just creating a plan mm-hmm. that includes paying the house payment off with your existing assets. So you know, it could be that you've been fully funding your employer plan, you're in good shape for retirement, you're just a couple of years out and you really want to hit that payment hard on your mortgage instead, mm-hmm. well, you lower down your employer contribution just to get the match because we're never going to leave money on the table. And then you take the surplus and you just put that towards the mortgage. Mm-hmm. Something to understand about that is it could affect your taxes. So if you typically are uh, using pre-tax dollars inside your employer plan, that helps lower your income tax. 
you'd want to make sure that you consider the impact of a change like that before you make the change there. Mm -hmm. So just understand, I'm not giving you a recommendation. I'm just telling you some things that clients have done in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, uh, finding uh, or creating a, a, an income plan for retirement that includes, you know, the, those few extra payments mm -hmm. to help pay off the mortgage faster. Uh, and you know, once, once that is paid off, then, you know, lowering you just have surplus dollars, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You just have sur those surplus dollars. But, uh, in, in all this conversation that, that we've had today, we obviously want to remind our listeners that we are not CPAs. We're not, nope. you know, tax consultants or anything like that. So please, please make sure to consult with your tax professional to analyze, you know, the benefits in your specific mm -hmm. situation. So it's time for our two cents and yep. I'm going to go first. Okay. Um, listen, we all, I think, desire to be debt free. At least everyone I've met has a desire to be debt free at some point. But what we want to be careful of is to make sure that becoming debt free doesn't come at too great a cost. Mm -hmm. We want there to be balance in your road to financial independence. So that's what we're always going to encourage you to find. Yeah. And there's good surprises and there's bad surprises. Having a surprise tax bill at the end of the year because you paid off your mortgage, uh, not a good surprise. So let us help you build a tax efficient method to help pay off that mortgage for you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it for us today. Again, thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you learned something uh, new today and please join us next time to learn what you don't know about money. Thanks for listening to the Talking Sense podcast. And if you like what you hear, make sure to subscribe to the podcast to get all the newest episodes. The Gen Wealth team is available to you 24 seven at info at getreadyforthefuture.com or call our offices at 866-653-PLAN. That's 866-653-7526. And while we like to have fun here, we're also financial advisors, and that means disclosures. You should personally consult a financial advisor before making any investment, and no strategy can assure success. General Financial Advisors is an Arkansas registered investment advisor with securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC.